I'm going to graph another rational function. And I have here the six step program to getting the graph of a rational function. So let's just go over that quickly again. First, we find the x, y intercepts, find the vertical asymptotes, find the horizontal asymptotes, if any, test for symmetry, find the sign when we make our graph, when we make our chart, and then we make our graph. So the rational function I have this time is f of x is equal to x over x squared minus 4. And the first thing I want to do is I want to find the x-intercepts of this. And the x-intercepts are going to be equal to when the top is equal to 0. So I want to know when this is equal to 0. Well, that's pretty easy enough. The x-intercept is equal to 0. Now I need to find the y-intercepts. And the y-intercepts are when We have f of 0, and then we figure out what that is. So here's another case where it's going to be fairly simple. We put in 0 for this function. This is going to give us 0 on the top, so no matter what, we're going to get a 0. I mean, we don't really need to go any further, but let's just fill this in for, for, the, for the sake of it. And this is going to be equal to 0. So the y-intercept is also equal to 0. Now we've done that, the next thing to do is to find the vertical asymptotes. And we do that by looking in the denominator. What's going to make this denominator equal to zero? So we go over here, we can say that this is equal to, or this is equal to x over x minus 2, x plus 2. And normally I like to leave the top in just in case. If this was an x minus 2, then that would be a hole. So it's good to, while we're only really concerned ourselves, we're only really concerned with the denominator when we're looking for vertical asymptotes, it's good to check to make sure that there's no holes. And here it's very, this is another well, this is a very simple one. It's very easy to see that x is not going to cancel out with anything. So we're going to have vertical asymptotes at minus 2 and 2. Next, we're going to look for horizontal asymptotes. Now, for horizontal asymptotes, we need to use our, our rules. Where our rules are, if if the power of the denominator is greater than the power of the numerator, like this one, then the horizontal asymptote is going to be equal to zero. Because this is an x squared. This is an x to the first. So as, as x gets larger and larger and goes to infinity, this bottom term is going to overpower this top term. So as x gets larger and larger, this is going to get larger and larger. And as, we, as this gets larger and larger, it's going to get closer and closer to 0. If it was the other way around, it was the numerator that was larger and the denominator that was a smaller power, then this top part would be getting larger and larger, and it would just keep going up and up and up. So there would be no horizontal asymptote. But in this case, there is a horizontal asymptote because this is a greater power than this. So the horizontal asymptote is equal to zero. Now next, we want to test for symmetry, because if there's symmetry, then that's going to alleviate some of the workload for us. We test for symmetry by putting in minus x for the function, and we look to see what happens. So if we put minus x into this equation, we get minus x over minus x squared minus 4, and this gives us minus x 
over x squared minus 4. So this gives us the negative of this function. So we can pull out a minus 1, and it gives us back our original function. So if we can pull out a minus 1, then that means that this is equal to minus f of x, which means that this is an odd function. So that'll be useful when we come to do our sign chart. So now that we have all of our horizontal as or our vertical asymptotes and our zeros, so we need the zeros and asymptotes. So when n of x is equal to zero, so this is this is the x-intercepts, and when d of x is equal to zero, so this is the vertical asymptotes. So we had an x-intercept of 0, we had a vertical asymptote of minus 2 and 2. So let's make this chart. So let's say this is minus 2, this will be 0, this will be 2. And I like to write what each one is. You can remember, that's fine, but I don't like making stupid mistakes by accident. Now what we need to do is to determine the sign between these different vertical asymptotes and zeros to figure out if the graph is going to be above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So we have the function, let's rewrite it over here, x over x minus 4, x squared minus 4. So we can pick a point over here between minus infinity, this is infinity over here, so between minus infinity and minus 2, minus 3 is pretty easy, so let's test minus 3. So if I put in minus 3, it's going to give me minus 3 over minus 3 squared minus 4. And that'll be 9 minus 4, so minus 3 fifths. So all of these are going to be negative. The, the, the values between minus infinity and minus 2. So let's test between minus 2 and 0 now. So minus 2 and 0, we can pick minus 1. That's a simple enough point. We have minus 1 minus 1 squared, minus 4, so we're going to get 1 squared, it's positive 1, minus 4, so minus a third, minus minus 1, so this is going to be equal to positive 1 third, so these are going to be positive. And we can use our, our symmetry property. We know that this is an odd function. So I know that this is going to be of opposite sign. It's going to be the same value, opposite sign. So I know this is going to be, well, let me just test 1. Let me just show, let me do 1 just to show. This is going to be a minus. So we have positive 1, 1 squared minus 4. This is going to be minus 3, minus 3 over positive 1. So this is going to be minus, and then this is, I'm not going to do this one. This is going to be the opposite. We know that because this is an odd function, so it's going to be, symmetrical with respect to the origin, which means that these are going to be the opposite sign when they're across from each other. It'll make more sense when I put the graph up. So we know that this is going to be positive, and this is going to be positive 3 over 5. So now that we have all this information, we can make the graph. values you have. Okay. Well, we have very small values. Maybe I'll just make one, each one a half. Actually, no, I'll just do one. I don't want to confuse anyone. So we'll say one, two, and three. So 
was thinking about making each one a half a unit, but I never really usually do that. So we'll save the confusion. The first thing I like to do is put on the asymptotes. We had one at minus 2 and 2 for vertical asymptotes, and for horizontal asymptotes we had one at 0. So obviously we don't really need to put that one on. That's just the x-axis. And now, well, let me pick a color. And now let's begin graphing this stuff. So at minus 3, we had minus 3 fifths. Minus 3, minus 3 fifths. So that's like right there. And the asymptote is at 0. So it's probably going to come in like that. And then go up to... Or go down to minus infinity. Next we have positive. So we have minus 1 and then 1 third. So minus 1, 1 third. That's probably like right there somewhere. And it also has an asymptote at 0. And it's going to go... Actually, no, wait. Wrong way. <laughs> Put the wrong side. So that's like here. And it's going to go like this. Sorry about that. Looked at the other one by mistake. <laughs> and it's going to come right down into zero. And some people might say, well, how come that is? I thought there was a, a horizontal asymptote right here. And the thing is, you can cross... The only place you can really cross a horizontal asymptote is when there's... There are places you can cross a horizontal asymptote. It's because it's not undefined. So here we can cross the horizontal asymptote, which is zero, because we can get a zero in the numerator, which will allow us to cross the horizontal asymptote. If we get a zero in the denominator, then it's undefined. So we can get... So basically, it, allow, it allows us to cross the horizontal asymptote sometimes, only at like one particular point. And it's only at exactly zero that we can cross the horizontal asymptote. Anything slightly larger or slightly smaller than that, it's not crossing. Zero is the only point that it can cross as graph. And we learned that this was symmetrical with the origin, so it's going to get be at minus three, which was the mistake I made earlier, and I looked at the wrong one. So that's going to come across like this, get close to zero, and then go to minus infinity. And we know that this is going to be the opposite of this one. This is two fifths. It's going to go up like that. Down to zero like that. And that's what that function looks like. You can see that it's symmetrical with respect to the origin. That's why we were able to save ourselves some time like that. And in fact, pretty much all of the problems in this beginning algebra class are going to be symmetrical with respect to the origin, like I said before, because it's, it's if, when there's going to be, if there's transformations, it's going to be very, very difficult for someone to come up with an accurate, accurate graph that they won't have to spend their entire life making without calculus. So that's this graph. Um, I might do one more, but they're all pretty much the same. This one happened to be not a lot of work. I didn't really mean for that to be not a lot of work, but I might do one more.